Hello and welcome to all the Chartered Management Institute's International Women's Day event. My name is Matt Jays and this is a short introduction for what is shaping up to be a very special event coming soon called The Big Challenges for a Better Future. In it, we're delighted to bring you a fantastic lineup of speakers, experts and leaders from both public and private organizations. Following the panel discussion, we'll be networking online in themed rooms to continue the conversation. We currently have over 1,400 people registered, and it's definitely not too late to join us. As we build up to the event, which launches in approximately 20 minutes now, I'll be reflecting on some of our recent activities around tonight's topics, as well as taking any questions you might have on how you can join and participate, as the event is open to all. But before I get to your questions, here's a clip from our latest Better Managers briefing with chartered companion Edwina Dunn. In it, Edwina talks about the inspiration behind her charity, The Female Lead. She explains the importance of the visibility of women in leadership and discusses their new campaign, Close the Entitlement Gap. In the interview with our chief executive, Anne Franca, she talks about the reason behind the project. So let's take a look. I suppose looking back, you tend to think, what have I learned? What did I experience? And I come out of this world where it was just completely male dominated. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about how did I do it? Why did I do it? And what I recalled was walking into all these boardrooms and just seeing men, just all men all over the world running retailers. Mm -hmm. And they were charming, they were clever, etc. But I was this lone female voice. And I've had a great career and I've loved every minute of it. But it made me realise that it's very, very hard to be what you can't see. Mm -hmm. And that was my inspiration for the project, which is, you know, how come we don't hear fantastic stories of women? How come we don't see them? You know, all we talk about are women who are long dead, old, mm -hmm. long dead women. Fantastic. But so that was it. That was my inspiration. I just wanted to tell these stories. And I thought if I could get them into schools, I might be able to inspire girls at a time where it would normalise that women are amazing and they're diverse and they're interesting. So we've turned our attention to women at work. Um, the reason being that we see men's careers mid-life um, going like that. So their tr career trajectory continues to take off. They grow. And what happens to women is about that 30, 32, 33 year age group, it begins to go like that and like that and sometimes even like that. And it's a real worry. And I think it's causing many, many corporates to be very concerned because, you know, the skills gap gets even greater because, you know, losing women who are incredibly talented at a point in time where they're probably at, you know, some of their greatest skill and peak is really worrying. So we set out to collect um, data. We work with Dr. Terry Apter, Cambridge psychology um, doctor, and we were looking at the factors and we wanted to separate myths from persistent problems. Now, the myths I can tell you about, mm -hmm. which is um, what's been said many, many times, women don't have ambition, mm -hmm. wrong. They do, and they're very comfortable with it. Two, women's commitment after children, not very good. Wrong. Just as strong, just as important. Mm -hmm. Women don't like earning more than their partner, especially if that's a man, right? Wrong. Women don't mind at all because it's freedom and control, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Fourth one. Imposter syndrome is bad. Worrying that you're not good enough is bad. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Makes you work harder, mm -hmm. makes you cleverer, makes you more ambitious. Mm -hmm. And then the final myth, um, women don't like taking risks. You know, very risk averse. Mm -hmm. Not true. Women are careful and they pick the risks that give them 
more advantage, more control, but they will take them. So those were the myths we found. A lot of myths. <laughs> A lot of myths. And I think being able to put them to one side and say this is not what is holding women back is really important. What we did find were things that were causing some concern. So we found some persistent problems. And, you know, we've kind of encapsulated some of them in this term, the unentitled mindset, which is really all about the fact that the legacy that women have inherited is that they're very lucky to have reached this very senior position. They're very lucky that they're allowed to take maternity leave, that they're allowed to leave at five o'clock at the end of the day. And because they're lucky, they probably shouldn't ask for a promotion and they probably shouldn't ask for a pay rise because they get other benefits. So flexible benefits have become almost the alternative to women feeling the entitlement to say, I'm good, I'm great at my job, pay me more, promote me. And so this mindset you know, we're really trying to out, to really be very open about, and to actually ask men to help women release themselves from this mindset. Because it it's not just men who may sometimes think it, it's women who think it too. So mm -hmm. it's be really, really important, very important. So the whole campaign is about talking about it, maybe having a laugh about it. You know, I bump into someone in the street and I say, so, you know, they bump into me in the street and I say, sorry. It's what it's yeah. what we do, right? It's, it's kind of silly, but we do do it. So we're going to try and out that. And then we're going to try and develop some policies and processes that really are much more around women and will actually help the office. So, you know, in this opportunity with COVID, let's build back better. Oh, yeah. But very importantly, let's build back so that women stay and their career goes like that in the future. Thanks ever so much to Edwina there for sharing her experience and insights uh, earlier, later last week, sorry. Uh, you can watch the full interview on our LinkedIn or YouTube channel by exploring our library of content. And obviously, if you're tuning in now, do let us know where you're tuning in from, uh, how you've been spending International Women's Day, and whether you'll be joining us at our event shortly. Um, also last week, we streamed our most recent CMI race event, looking at better work culture with two experts, Advita Patel and Dr. Jamia Koya. The importance of choosing to seek out and celebrate women's achievements continues in this clip as we get Avita's advice on her A Leader Like Me project. We also discuss choosing to challenge bias and discrimination, focusing on ending microaggressions to achieve the better, inclusive work culture that businesses need to attract, retain and progress talent. So let's listen into a short clip now. And one of the key things that came out of that conversation was not seeing leaders who looked like us in senior positions or, or allies or sponsors who could understand what it's like to be underrepresented in the business that we work in. And, and all the conversations that we've had today, it can, as, as Jimmy said, it can accumulate into something where you start doubting your own abilities. And you start thinking that you're not worthy of that space or you, you know, you think you're a fraud or you feel like you're not, you don't belong in that space. Uh, imposter syndrome, we've all heard of it, right? We've, we, we've all at one point in our careers probably experienced it as well. So we decided to create a safe uh, space, a community, um, starting off with women of colour uh, across any industry who wanted to um, gain a bit of confidence and some support in dealing with things like microaggressions and challenges that may face because a part of understanding microaggressions is is uh, is and uh, challenging microaggressions sorry is having that confidence to do so right and not feeling like you're the one that's uh, uh, imagining the situation or you're the one that doesn't you know you're the one that's going to be rocking the boat you know you need to keep your head down because ultimately you, you're lucky 
to be in that job because you've convinced yourself you're lucky to be in that job because you don't see other people who look like you in that environment. So it, it kind of all kind of feeds into this. So we recognize that if we created a program where we could enhance the confidence, build a community, a safe space where people could, could have those conversations, then some of these situations of microaggressions would be pulled out a bit quicker rather than, as I said at the beginning, you know, rather than the analogy of that death by a thousand cuts because it can make a big it can really impact you mentally uh, and, and, and your own self-worth and self-esteem can take a big hit in all of this. Great insights there from Advita. And you can go back and watch the full conversation um, with Advita and Jami uh, covering a lot of really important uh, practical tips for managers and leaders. Um, as well as personal experiences. So I highly recommend you do go back and you can find the recording in our YouTube playlist under CMI Race. Now we've got just over 10 minutes to go uh, to our special International Women's Day event. Um, so I'm really hoping that you might be able to join us and we're going to drop a link in the chat in order to continue this conversation. You'll be able to go straight over to our platform and join our panel of experts at 5.30, that's uh, Greenwich Mean Time, UK. And then following that, you'll have the opportunity to network with other managers and leaders from across different organizations, different sectors, and uh, with lots and lots of different experiences and find out how they're choosing to challenge today and how you can work together to achieve change. So please do let us know in the comments if you're going to be joining us very shortly and take a look out for the link and we hope you'll see us very soon. Thanks ever so much.